Wow, talk about controversy. If you haven't seen part one, make sure to check that out first. Part one made a lot of people upset and it also made me change the way I plan to do these videos. Some complaints were that I was using a phone that is only being used by 2% of the world. So to really turn up the heat, I decided to remove the Galaxy Nexus out of my videos and bring an old phone with an old operating system. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Samsung Galaxy S or fasten it as some of you know it by. But to even make things worse, I'm going to be using Android 2.2 Froyo, an operating system that was released in 2010. That is two years old. This is to show you how far Apple is behind and how much Android has evolved. But wait, there's more. There's one last thing. I will be using the new iPad with a quad-core processor. You can say this is a David and Goliath battle. Let's get started. So in part two, I want to talk about what people do every day. Let's start off with sharing. Sharing is something that we all do. We love to share videos like this one with our friends and family or even enemies. So let's take a look at how sharing is done in iOS. I'm looking at this website, NissanRayShop.com, and I want to share this with my fr Facebook buddies. So when I click here on the share, all I can do is tweet, print, or add to bookmark. But I'm not really able to share this with any of my friends on Facebook. See, iOS only integrates with Twitter, email, and that's basically about it. With Android, all I have to click is on the menu button. Mind you, we're running Android 2.2. Let's click on more, and let's share the page. Here I can share with Bluetooth, Dropbox, Facebook, Gmail, Google+, Messaging, Twitter. <clears throat> Excuse me. By the way, I'm able to share this with any application I have installed, literally. The reason why these are showing up is because I have these applications installed. If I remove Twitter, then Twitter won't be here. And I can easily share this with all of my Facebook friends with just one click. Not so much on iOS. I can only do that with Twitter. Everyone is always saying how iOS apps are much better than Android and how things just work a lot better. I found out that that's not really the case. Take for example here, Dropbox. Let's say the wife sent me a, a grocery list. If I come in here, I'm able to see that, let's see if I can zoom a little closer here, that I need to buy eggs, milk, bananas, apples, oranges, cereal, and bacon. But let's say I wanted to add something. Can't do it. I'm not able to manipulate this file, this grocery.txt. So, again, very limited. I'm not even able to create a folder in here. With Android, I can come in here and I can click on the grocery.txt and I can come in here and let's say I need some cookies. I can add cookies right within the app. I can go back and it'll ask me if I want to save and I can just click on save and it's done. I can also create a new folder easily and just call this test. Oops, can't spell. Test. And I can easily just create that. Doesn't happen with iOS. I've noticed that a lot of apps are very limited. So, to me, Android has the better user experience. Look at this beautiful retina display. Where's the HD app for Netflix? It doesn't exist yet. I know it's to come, but HD app 720p already exists for Android. Now I don't have time to go over every single app to show you how better it is on Android, but I will show you this. Let's take for example here Angry Birds Space. If I were to buy it on the iPhone, it would cost me 99 cents. Now, 
if I bought it on my iPhone, doesn't it make sense that it would be available on my iPad also? Well, it is for an additional $2.99. This is what I meant on my first video about combining the ecosystem between phone and tablet. To me, that's kind of ridiculous that I would have to purchase the app twice. But one thing that I've noticed is mostly all of my favorite apps are free on Android, including Angry Birds Space. Let's take a look. You'll notice here Angry Birds is free. It does not cost a dime. Okay, so once again, a lot more benefits with Android having free applications. And since we're talking about free applications, let's also talk about when we download a paid app, how it allows us to at least try the app without committing. Not so with iOS. If I were to purchase any of these paid apps, according to the terms and conditions, I'm pretty much stuck with it. And let me tell you, I've been stuck with a couple of crappy apps not very happy. Android, even though it only gives me 15 seconds, that's at least 15 seconds that it allows me to play around and make my decision if I want to keep that app or not. So remember, we're talking about what people love to do. Now I know I said I wasn't going to bring the Galaxy Nexus, but since I already have all my stuff loaded on this one, in this particular demo I'm going to show you, you can do this with any Android phone. Let's talk about gaming. Let's talk about emulators. Android has some of the best emulators. And let me tell you, they're all free and you can download them or sideload them. And without rooting your phone, again, we're talking about stock Android here. Let me load up the NES. I grew up playing the Nintendo Entertainment System. And here's all the games downloaded. Let's go ahead and load up Contra. Okay, now, what makes it better? Let's blow up my Bluetooth controller here, hit start, and let's begin to play. Let me just get that out of the, the glare. Okay, just like good old times, it's that easy. Best part about this is you can connect this to your television, and you have every console possible, including PlayStation. Okay, anyhow, let's put that away. So this is the beauty of Android is that we can have all of these games, all of these consoles. In my case, I have Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Genesis, and the original Sega Master System. And I can play those all by using my Bluetooth controller, including hooking it up to my television, and having a full console. Unfortunately, there is no comparison. I can't show you anything comparable to I, on that on iOS because it does not exist. So unfortunately, iOS device must sit out again because this is just not even possible. I'm looking here at the Angry Birds Space HD that I want to play really bad. And I'm so excited and I'm browsing the web on my laptop but I don't have my mobile phone with me. It's, you know, somewhere else. Yes, I bought the, brought the Galaxy Nexus just because everything's already synced with my accounts here. So it'd be much easier, but you can do everything that I'm about to show you on any Android device 2.2 and up, okay? Now, if I click here on installed, because I already have it installed on other devices, I'm gonna say I wanna install it on my Galaxy Nexus. Now watch, I need to do this. I just click on install and it automatically will send, there it is, automatically install it on my phone without me having to even touch my phone. I'm just showing you on my, that it's downloading so you can see, okay? Now, that's really cool. Now you're gonna say, oh, big deal, like who cares, you know? That's fine. I'm just showing you the integration that it has with a desktop to phone. Let me show you, let me kick it up a notch. Let's say I'm browsing a website and I need to leave. I, I gotta go, but I really like this website. Not a problem. All I have to do is, I wanna show you guys, I'm not even touching the phone. I'm gonna show you that all I have to do is click here because I have to go, boom, done. Sends the information and I have it now on my phone so I can go browse 
while I'm at the train or whatever it is. There it is. Okay. This could also work, let's say I was in maps, okay, and I had some directions that I just found on, the, on my desktop and I needed to send them to my phone. Not a problem. All I do is send that and I get it on my phone. How cool is that? Sorry, can't do that with iOS. It's amazing that Android works with so many phones. When you think about how many devices are out there compared to Apple, it's pretty amazing. I mean, think about how many different processors, how many different screen sizes, some with slide-out keyboards, some without slide-out keyboards, front-facing cameras, back-facing cameras. You know, Android works with, or has to work with all of the different types of configurations. When you think about Apple, Apple only has to worry about one phone and that's it. And they have to get it right. Android, you know, again, they have so many different, whether you want, you know, 3.7 inches of, of screen, 4 inch Super AMOLED, you know, 4.65. I mean, these are the different types of configuration that, that Android just works. And the beauty of it is that you, as a consumer, have a choice. Again, whether you want, you know, a slide out keyboard, or, you know, whether you want um, an 8 megapixel camera or, you know, no front facing camera. Actually, this one does have a front facing camera. You know, whether you want soft keys or no soft keys. In this case, you know, they're integrated into the OS. This is amazing. Think about all of the different configurations, RAM, chipsets, you know, phone sizes. And for in order for Android to work with all of this, it's pretty brilliant if you really think about it. It makes you wonder, you know, which Apple only has to work with several different configurations, why they can't get it right. Now again, I'm not saying that the iPhone is bad, but the iPhone is a one size fits all solution. If you like that, that's great. And that's awesome. However, you don't have the choice. You have to go with everything that Apple approves. You know, when part one we showed you the browser. Now I like Safari. A lot of people were commenting, what, you don't like Safari? I do like Safari. But I actually like uh, Google Chrome much better. It is a much better browser. I can show you a million reasons why I like Google Chrome. And I have the choice to choose that. You know? The lack of 4G on the iPhone. I know you're probably thinking iPhone 5 will have 4G, but then again, these phones have 4G already, like this one here, the Galaxy Nexus. And I'm telling you right now, unless you've experienced 4G, there's no way in hell I would even go get a 3G phone today. You know, it's funny, when Apple came out with their keynote on the iPad, the new iPad, and showed the comparison between 3G and 4G, you know, that's basically what it, what it is. And sometimes, very rarely, when I don't get 4G coverage and I'm, th and I'm on 3G, I'm telling you, it's painful. And I can't believe that I'm still, or there's people out there chugging away with 3G. It's just pathetic. It's crazy. I would never get a 3G phone. But that's the choice. You know, people have to wait for Apple to roll these new configurations out. And in most cases, sometimes it's over a year before you get a new re phone uh, refresh. Again, the iPhone is a beautiful phone. And hands down, I'll tell you right now, it's way nicer than this, you know. But it's, it has a very small screen for my personal preference. Some of you might like it. I, you know, I have, you know, pretty average size hands. And even the Nexus feels, to me, you know, a little small. Or I would like it a little bit bigger. So, but going with Android, I have that choice. With iPhone, that three and a half inch screen just kills me. I don't care if it has a retina display. That's like going to somebody's house and saying, hey, I have a 2500 by 1600 resolution, 32 inch big screen. I'd take the 100, I'd rather take the 100 inch big screen with 720p than a 32 inch, you know, higher resolution. And to me, that's just the way it is. So for me, it's about choice. When I had the iPhone 4, 4S, there were several times where I ran out of battery. And I know it may sound dumb, but I would like the ability to change out the battery. And let me tell you, the iPhone 4S is a gorgeous phone. But not being able to change out the battery, I know to some may be, 
a pet peeve, but I'm telling you right now, I bought a $30 battery, and actually it's an OEM replacement, but I'm able to get an additional 10 hours. How long does it take me to take the back plate out, take out the battery, put in a new one, put in you know, additional battery, and that's it. It's done. There. How long did that take me? Not even five seconds. And I have additional 10 hours of battery life. With with the iPhone, I struggled. I had to buy a car charger. The worst part is these proprietary chargers here. It's not even a micro SD. Anybody, you can go anywhere and everybody has a micro SD. I don't care where you go. You know, not everybody has an, an iPhone, iPad, iPod, you know, charging device. And you know, you can go to somebody's car, but I can almost assure you that they will have, unless of course they have Apple, you know, they, they will not have uh, a charger. So these are the little things that to me make a difference on why I choose Android. Again, some people may call me a fanboy, and I am a fanboy. I like Android, and I'm also a fanboy for Apple. I like Apple devices. And I'll tell you right straight up, the iPad is the best tablet. And we'll talk about that a little later, but stay tuned. I hope you guys like part two. I'm working on part three. Part three is even gonna be better. Every time we'll just, I'm gonna step it up a notch. And I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe. Part three might take a little longer, so just, you know, bear with me here. I'm doing this on my spare time. Once again, I hope you guys really liked it, and stay tuned.